Brian Painter of Oklahoma, and I'm joined by Rick Smith at the National Weather Service in Norman. Uh, Rick, uh, today you made an announcement concerning the El Reno uh, tornado and its rating. Kind of share with us what you guys have found. Well, we, we've been analyzing this tornado since last Saturday. We sent damage survey teams out on Saturday morning. They spent the whole day surveying the path, and um, one of the good things about this damage survey was it didn't hit a lot. I mean, there were some, clearly some structures damaged, and there was clearly uh, significant impacts to people's lives and, and loss of life, unfortunately, but um, it, it didn't hit a lot of structures, so that really prevented us from getting a, a rating that that matched up with what we thought the intensity of this tornado probably actually was. So another part of that assessment involved uh, reviewing and analyzing some data from mobile Doppler radars that were working out in the field on Friday. Uh, there were at least two different radars that were out, the, the uh, DALs or the Doppler on wheels that, that uh, you may have seen on television before, and then also a, a smaller truck-mounted radar from the University of Oklahoma uh, called uh, RAXPOL, which stands for Rapid uh, X-band polarimetric radar. Essentially, this is a radar that, that spins around at high rates of speed and, and grabs new images about every one to two seconds. So uh, we spent part of the weekend and early on, on Monday uh, analyzing that data, and we came to the conclusion that it, it, it told us some, some new facts about this tornado that we didn't uh, know before. Um, t two main things, two very important things that that were gathered from the data. One is that the uh, tornado had had wind speeds within it that were well within the uh, range to classify it as an EF5 tornado. EF5 tornadoes have wind speeds over 200 miles per hour, and this this tornado definitely had that well over 250 miles an hour we, from the radar data. And then secondly, the data shows that the tornado was uh, a conservative estimate of 2.6 miles wide, uh, which, which uh, oddly enough, places that in the record books now as the widest or the largest tornado in the United States history. So it was uh, some significant findings, uh, thanks to our, our partners here in the research community and at the, at the university. You know, you mentioned today that EF-5s are rare, and I, I believe this is now the 14th in 108 years that has been recorded in Oklahoma. You said they're rare. You said this one was super rare. Is that mainly because of its width and all? Yeah, I mean, it, this is, it's, it's rare to get a mile-wide tornado in Oklahoma. This is, this, is, this is twice as wide. This is if you put two of the more 20th, May 20th tornadoes side by side. This is how wide this is. And and um, that's exceptionally rare to have a tornado that wide. I mean, it's never happened before uh, in the United States, as far as we know. Uh, and of course, having the wind speed to, to classify it as an EF5 is rare. I mean, less than 1% of tornadoes in an average year uh, ever get that intense. And we've had two EF5 tornadoes in central Oklahoma in the span of 11 days. So there, there's, there's no precedent for any any of the territory we're in here now as far as the how these storms have come so frequently and and impacted the you know the same general area you know Rick uh, there's always uh, the most tragic side and that side when uh, lives are lost uh, talk to me about that and also uh, you, you know about what your fears would have been had this struck other areas yeah, I mean, any any loss of life is always horrible in uh, property or, or anything else, and we're, we certainly are not minimalizing that at all. But, uh, you know, if you if you imagine what could have happened had this tornado developed, um, you know, 20 miles, 30 miles further to the east, or had it not stopped, had it kept going further, a lot of times these these large tornadoes become longer track tornadoes. This particular one was on the ground for 16 miles, but had it kept going into the very densely populated areas of west in the west sides of Oklahoma City, or if had it gone through Yukon 
or El Reno or Union City even, um, I, I don't want to think what would have what would have happened. I mean, it would have been there were some extreme some extreme winds inside this large tornado, and, and, the, and the, the devastation would have likely been pretty incredible. All right. Uh, Rick, thanks so much for uh, all your time today and, and for your help on this. Okay. Thanks, Brian.